Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Gridiron Gals podcast. I am Rita, the NFL chick. And hey, everybody, it's Chelsea, a.k.a. Chelsea is right. So we decided to do something different this season. We decided to do videos in addition to the podcast. So if you're seeing this right now, um, hello out there. Yes, I look like Sinead O'Connor uh, at the very <laughs> moment. Um, I got a fresh haircut and the color as of right now is blending in with the color of my skin. So I look bold, but I'm not fully bold. But, you know, y'all get the picture. And of course, you see uh, my my beautiful friend and co-host Chels uh, <laughs> on the opposite side. So uh, hopefully you guys will like the visuals as the season goes on. I promise you it'll, it, it'll get better. Uh, yeah, as the better. season goes on. Right. So um, we, we thank you guys for coming back. Of course, we started the new season last week. And so, Chels, we've already gotten through the first week of uh, preseason. So we're going into week two. But week one has already happened. Was there anything that stood out to you in week one um, in terms of what happened? For me, um, it, it, it's the stupid streak uh, of the Ravens. Now they have 24 preseason wins. I am over this. Um, I want this to end. Uh, unfortunately, they play the Commanders this weekend. So I don't want it to end with the Commanders because their fans have been talking real, real greasy. But I would like for this to be over. Uh, by the end of this preseason. So that is what my biggest thing <laughs> came from this, is that this streak that means nothing to nobody has continued, and I'm tired of talking about it at this point. So what I, have you gained uh, from preseason? I actually did not even know about you guys' streak until recently, and I was like, okay. well, that's interesting. Whereas my Cowboys, we we don't like to win in preseason. But, um, <laughs> but I thought that they did very well uh, the other night. I like to see the young scrappers and the folks that's on the cusp of making a 53-man roster and stuff like that. But I don't think anything really, really stood out um, like that. I mean, I watched Bryce Young a little bit. Um, he, you know... He got to step some things up, but I'm not too critical. You know, people like to get all critical in preseason. I want everybody to just relax and go outside and sniff some air because it's not that serious. You want them <laughs> to get all of the little fumbles and, and the little things out of their system in the preseason. Don't do it in week one. So I thought people were a little hypercritical of him and CJ Stroud too. Um, of course, all eyes are going to be on the Texans uh, because – um, our boy D'Amico Ryans is down there building a, a, a machine. So we're going to look, you know, real heavily at, uh, at CJ. But I'm just like, well, what, what are you comparing him to? You know, so I think everybody. Davis just needs Mills? To I mean, like, come the fuck. Yeah, Davis, Davis Mills, like... you know, are you, you know, I, you know, so I, 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 I think, I mean, I feel like the, the, the TV folks were kind of like, oh, this is preseason, it's kind of relaxed, but you you Twitter people need to, y'all need a chill pill. They really was going in about this, this preseason stuff. And I think, I know the NFL has made us wait so long that, you know, anything is something, but we'll see. We'll see what the next couple of weeks look like. One of the other things that I found to be interesting was um, the Saints and the Chiefs played both of their starters for a little bit in that game. And I, I think mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because, you know, they they had Patrick Mahomes out there. They had Travis Kelsey out there in that dome in New Orleans. And so we're not seeing a ton of people play their starters. So mm -hmm. for both teams, I, and maybe for the Saints, I get it with David Carr, mm, Derek Carr, sorry. Derek. I be forgetting Ooh. that David is on the NFL Network and the older mm -hmm. brother. But Derek Carr – is new, so I can see him like maybe playing a little bit because he's new to the Saints, obviously coming from the Raiders. But like, what is Patrick and Travis out there uh, out there doing? Like, there is no reason. I, I mean, I, you know. And look, I'm not saying that you gotta really, you know, um, be careful with these players. But I would much, I would think that the Chiefs starters would be playing a preseason game at home and not. You know, in a in way, right? In a way, right. in that's way very in strange. Dome, in a dome, which is you know, different turf could be dangerous. I'm just saying that that was a little risky to me. I thought that that was weird when I saw both teams with their starters, but more so the Kansas City Chiefs. But listen, clearly, I can't tell somebody who's won two Super Bowls how to conduct their business, so maybe it's me. Maybe I need to mind my fucking business, and that's what I'm <laughs> going to do. Over here. And he won the last Super Bowl with one leg. 
Exactly. So I guess he probably like y'all do y'all little podcast and let me let me be out here playing football, right? <laughs> I sound worse than his wife to think it should be yes. like um fried chicken. I'm dead ass wrong, just like she dead ass wrong. So <laughs> fried you know, chicken. I, she was adamant about that fried chicken, Ooh, honey. She, said, no. she said, my, my husband is black. Fried chicken is soothes his soul. And Girl. Said, nope, Mexican. <laughs> Which oh. from, for Texan, I think I understand, right? But that lady said, fried chicken. That's all. That's <laughs> no people watching them in the preseason, like, whoa, Nelly, why they out there <laughs> playing? <laughs> but you know what? She know he knows more than me. He's won two Super Bowl MVP. So mm -hmm. I'ma just let them do what they do and mind my fucking business over here. Uh a couple things that we've seen some running backs move around. Your boy Ezekiel Elliott went to the New England Patriots. Um, and Dalvin Cook, who was who was flirting with the Jets, officially made uh the move and went to New York with the Jets. How do you feel knowing your boy Zeke is not coming back to Dallas? I hate it. Oh. I don't like it. It feels unnatural, even though I know why it happened. I know Zeke has lost a lot of his explosiveness. I do think that he still benefits, especially in, in coverage and things like that. Fine. You know, y'all did what y'all had to do, um, but I, I don't like it, but I'm, I'm also glad that he did. he didn't like I feel like things might be amicable. Like he didn't try to go to like an NFC East team or he's all the way out of the NFC period, new number and everything. Like I call him 21. So, you know, 21 is now 15. He cut his hair and I'm like, did that make my man cut his hair before he got to new England? You know, it's cold up there. They done made him cut his hair. They, you know, they say, you know, Bill run a tight ship around here. You got to get you a little fade or something. But you got a fresh little fade. You, I mean, a fresh fade, you know. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't love it. But I, I'll get used to it, and I'm, I'm going to be rooting for him until the time, possibly, when I can't root for him. We'll see I don't. I, I, I look. It's a move that you know the Patriots felt like they needed to make. Um, it doesn't change much to me. Uh, in terms of like, they still need some help at the oh, wide receiver yeah. position. You know, they, you know, we obviously know they slipped on the DeAndre Hopkins situation. And so, I, you know, I don't know how impactful this is going to be. If this was Zeke of like two, three years ago, we'd be having a completely different conversation. But now, you know, I got to know if Zeke is back, you know, at, at least in some of his old form that we're used to seeing. But, you know, the Patriots got bigger fish to fry. And so this didn't really yeah. move, the, move the needle. They have a whole me. lot of holes to plug up on, on offense. Um, and, I mean, it's a one-year deal. You know, I call it an audition deal. So, you know, we'll just see what happens. Yep. I, I hope he does well, though. Yeah. And, and obviously with the Dalvin Cook signing, he flirted with Miami, his hometown, a little bit. Um, but the, look, the Jets have really stacked themselves up. They already had Brees Hall at running back, who I thought was, you know, very good. But adding Dalvin Cook just makes them more dangerous. I mean, but they do play in a division in the AFC East, which you expect, uh, you know, outside of New England, everybody else is going to be fighting for, mm -hmm. you know, first place. So, oh, yeah. I mean, this this is a good signing for the Jets. But as far as I'm concerned, they better make it to the AFC Championship with the type of talent that they have, and having Aaron Rodgers at their quarterback is that's how. Oh, absolutely! Her. This is this is not a building thing for them. This is you got to go. They got to do what the Rams did. Like you got to go take it, take it and run. Um, because you know Aaron, Aaron is Aaron, but Aaron is not a spring chicken. But the funny thing about Dalvin Cook is he said he tired of playing on the other side of Aaron Rodgers. He said enough of that. <laughs> I want to be on the right side. And I said, oh, I know that's right. He's so going to, to Miami be on the winning side. Because going to Miami would have put him on the other side again. Yeah, on right? the other side again. He was like, no, I need to be on the right side. I need to get the handoff. So I, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> well, I, I hope Aaron likes you. Because you know he got certain people that he like and that he don't like. So I hope he like you because you might not get the ball. Oh, Lord. Well, that's another story for another day. You we'll we'll see how that one, what, how that goes. All right, the story that, that's been the talk of the town for the past week has been uh, Michael Orr, um, the former Raven and Panther uh, offensive tackle. We know him best from The Blind Side, the movie, and the mm -hmm. book. And then apparently he put out a petition regarding um, The Blind Side 
uh, and saying that he didn't get any money um, from the movie. He's saying, or the book for that matter, he's saying that the Tui family um, had said that he was a, a part of their family and adopted, but really they just um, gave him a conservatorship um, form for that. Now, he claims that he didn't know about the conservatorship. However, TMZ pulled up some information um, from one of his old books. And he talks about the conservatorship. So, you know, there's there's people obviously on both sides. You got people that are saying, oh, he must be out of money. So he's just grasping for straws. You got people that are saying that the Tuis are, are op uh, opportunists. Where do you stand in this whole Michael Orr saga? I want all of them to leave me alone. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It is absolutely, it is ridiculous. It is unnecessarily time consuming. And I want them to tussle, tussle out amongst themselves. That is what I would like to see happen right now. I do think that the Tuis are opportunistic. I think that they saw a young uh, black boy with um, exceptional talent that may have needed a little a little help, you know, which is not uncommon. We know where the recruiting comes from. We know where the talent is. Everybody knows where the talent is. And I thought I think that they saw an opportunity. Um, did they know he was going to make it to the NFL? You never know because that's really a crapshoot. But they knew that he had exceptional talent. Of course, that's not what was portrayed in the movie. You got it in the movie like that. Like the mother taught him how to play left tackle right tackle what's his position oh, no, they, they, they said that the son the son taught him how to do it with cans the, the, little, hey, hey, the, hey, little, hey. the little middle enough. schooler enough, enough. meanwhile uh, in, in real Who life he was already playing football when he when they met him he was all and that's what i'm saying they knew he had this exceptional talent already so i can see um and of course manipulating him to go to Ole miss and we saw how that kind of out played out in the movie where, where you know people got involved it started to be a little murky or whatever but he went on to to Ole Miss he went on got you know ended up in the NFL he's a grown man has kids and everything um you know I I did not know but I thought that he would have had you know some sort of agency but my issue with him is why you wait so long you got everybody thinking that you are dummy the movie had you may have had me thinking the boy was slow I was like, well, you know, they took the slow boy in and let him sleep on the sofa. Now we're finding out in, in some video clips, it was a terrible video clip, but we're finding out that guy's actually really smart. Like he was legit on the Dean's list at Ole Miss. He, you know, he went on the journalism track, like he's a talented person, but like, why you let these people play you for so long? Why be quiet for so long? You're married with kids. You've been in the NFL. You've had you've had you've had to have an NFL agent. You had to have um, representative from the NFL Players Association. Um, this happened, you know, like I, I mentioned it on Twitter, and people were like, "Oh, well, social media wasn't like it was back then." That movie came out in 2009. We was ten toes into Twitter on 2009. The first tweet I would have sent out is, I know that this movie got me looking like a big black dummy, but I'm not. <laughs> and I'm smart. And here go my transcript. I would have put my transcript in the notes app and posted it right on Twitter. Like, and keep on talking about it. Like, you got to, you, yo, everybody thought he was radio out here, Rita. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. And, and I, do remember, I do remember him having some pushback. Um, when the movie came out and not liking the way that he was portrayed, but not to the point where it was like, like you said, like it was like something that we heard repetitively in terms right. of his dislike about it. Uh, it was just yeah, it like, was kind of yeah. like a oh, maybe not really. Like he, yeah. he made me think that it, maybe there were some aspects of the movie that were kind of you know, like, especially the football part. He was like, oh, well, you know, I was actually playing football before then or whatever, whatever. But like. The rest of it, like you're just gonna let us think you're stupid for all this time, and then now yeah. things things are inconsistent, and so you know how we are. Everybody is people are starting to choose sides, and now it's just like you know I'm not I'm not choosing a side. Um, I, I I think that I do think that he was taken advantage of, and I, but now y'all talking about something, somebody owe this money, somebody owe this money. All of y'all sound crazy right now. 
Yeah. I, so I, I think that there's some truth in the middle of this, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, he probably does need some money. And I think that they probably did take advantage of him to some degree. Yeah. Um, and, cause it's funny because now it's come out that they're, they're ending the conservatorship. Well, why did y'all still have it at this point? He is a grown ass man. A 37 year old and he knew he was under conservatorship. Yeah. 37. That's that's the crazy part about that. But, uh -huh. you know, my thing is this. So I, I'm seeing people, you know, like, oh, he must be broke. I don't care if he's broke. If mm -hmm. you use my name and my likeness and I don't get a dime from it, I'm going to have something to say about that. I don't care if I'm a billionaire. I don't care if I have ten dollars to my name. Either way, I deserve to be compensated for using my name, for using my likeness. And you made almost two hundred million dollars on this movie. There's no fucking way that you think that I'm supposed to let that ride. Or let anybody else get the money for that matter. So if it is true and they did get paid because they are claiming, oh, they only got money from the from the books uh, sales. But OK, so he don't deserve that money either. Like, yeah, animal, yeah. Animal, uh, and, and yeah, because they wouldn't get the money from the actual the how well the movie did. They would get it from if they wrote the screenplay or like you said, the book, you know, but it, it, and I agree with you, like if. If you owe me five dollars, I want my five dollars. I want my $5. You know, I don't care how much. And like, why do we put a limit on what somebody should be getting? Like, yeah, he's he's you know, he had a good NFL career, he's made money, but yeah, but that's also some more money. And yep. and, 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 and listen, these it. are not poor people. These people own like what they own, like a chain of restaurants yes, or something like that. Like a whole bunch of get up off that, get up off that money. Y'all got that money. You I have it. it. Oh, give me, me one of the restaurants. Yeah, give me one of the restaurants. It. So I don't have no problem with him seeking the money, um, but you need to be honest about what happened. Yep. Don't try to say, I didn't know when you actually did know. Yep. You did know. Like nobody, you, no one is hiding conservatorship. And by you saying you didn't know, now I think you're a big black dummy again, yeah, friend. Exactly. Or a liar <laughs> or a big black liar. So I mean, <laughs> big black liar. Okay, which one yeah, is it so going to be? A big black liar. Like, come on. I mean, I'm just being honest. <laughs> You not being honest is now putting doubt in people's minds. The, the Bingo. Doubt in the public of the people. Absolutely. And that's the problem. I, I'm on your side in terms of if you feel like that they got paid, you should get that some of that money or majority of that money. But I'm not with you if you're going to sit here and not tell the truth, bro. You got to come out and be honest about something. Okay? Right. Point blank, period. And, and that's where we stay. And, and, and can we stop saying that... Um, we asked for Sandra Bullock's uh, Oscar. It started out as a joke, okay? It was literally a joke. And now all of a sudden, y'all are saying black people are asking for Sandra Bullock to take back her Oscar. Nobody, I mean, nobody said that. Nobody it said that seriously. Mm -mm. So what happened is the, the culture says it, because we joking, right? Yes. Then the people that's got their eyes where they don't need to be looking on our timelines, they taking it seriously because they can't read between the lines. And when I say them people, I'm not saying like white people. I'm talking about just people who are outside of it. Right. And then it turned into black people want Sandra Bullock. Listen, and then so, for the people who seriously, some I mean, some people say that she should give her Oscar back. You sound, you, you are not worth addressing. But for the people who feel like she should make a statement, about what she played she played a character in a movie it is not her goal her 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 um she is not supposed it to come out and make a that's she not her, her job, job. She did she, her. and she played the hell out of that role she's one of my favorite actresses she can act her ass off she's a virginia girl leave her alone that lady is and also like somebody was like yeah you know her i think she's taking care of like Someone in her family, I don't know if it's her, her brother or her husband, but somebody is dying from ALS or something. Like, leave that lady alone. And what, could, what is she going to say? What is everybody in that movie going to say? Like, oh, well, we found out, da, 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 da. Their job is to act. Their job is to act and entertain. Their job is not to say, oh, well, let me verify the accuracy of this movie before I star in this role. That's what the I got time for that. Done, and that's what Hollywood should have done, not Sandra Bullock. Yeah, and even and, and uh, honestly, Hollywood messes up true stories all yeah, the time. Yeah. 
all the time. <laughs> if I'm Sandra Bullock, I'm putting out a statement that says, I ain't no fuck y'all. And that's going to be my motherfucking statement. I ain't giving shit back. Okay, but yeah. I earned my damn Oscar. Y'all can go to hell. That, but, but see, Sandra Bullock is a better woman than me, so she won't do that. But but if it were me, I would say fuck y'all. Yeah, very very disrespectfully too, by the way. Yeah. Leave her alone. Thank you Leave so much. Uh, you know, college football is coming. So so as of right now, it's a little quiet. We've talked some Pac-12. Mm -hmm. it, it's not much moving. It's still four teams left, but they're trying to shift over to the ACC. Um, that's <sighs> ridiculous within itself. Uh, but did you watch the Johnny Football documentary, Chels? I did. Okay. And what did you think about it? Everything is a lie. Everything. Everything is a lie. And I feel like, you mean tell me I was sitting in that line like that? We all. If the, ain't nobody if tapped me on my. Ain't nobody tapped me. Okay. And so if you guys haven't watched the documentary. <laughs> Um, obviously it's about Johnny Menzel and his, you know, his stardom, mm -hmm. um, when he was at Texas A&M, it just talks about his, his journey from when he um, started playing football to where he is now. And in the process, one of his friends that he played football with, who later became like his like unofficial agent. What they, what they started doing was they were actually signing autographs and they were getting paid, which back in the day, you know, you could not do um, due to NCAA mm -hmm. rules. Right. So um, they had to find ways to when, when the, the investigations started, they had to find ways to mitigate, you know, those allegations. And so one of the things that the friend came up with was that uh, Manziel's family came from oil money. Now, they weren't poor. They had some money, so people didn't really question it a ton, but the oil money thing is an absolute lie. Um, they made that up as to assume that the family was wealthy, and so that's where Manziel was getting his money his from, money. to keep mm -hmm. you up to speed. So the this is a kid. This dude was the same age as Johnny Manziel, and kudos to him. If he is not working in marketing or PR right now, yeah. then he is yeah. wasting his talents because yeah. that man was helping him get all that money okay but for him to come up with that and for nobody to fact check and the media just ran just with the story with the little white boy told y'all that his family came from money is phenomenal to me on so many levels it is amazing and it was one part in the documentary i thought was very funny um where he said that he made the money from the autographs and then he gave it to his grandfather and got his grandfather to write him a check so he could put yep. it into the account it so that they longer. would look like the grandfather gave him the money. And then when yep. they panned to the grandfather, the grandfather was like, all <laughs> right. And yeah, you had to hook your boy up. But I feel like like you guys are are in Texas. Don't the all don't the all billionaires all know each other? I mean, all you had to do was just ask somebody. They nobody fact checked. Anybody. Nobody said a word. When Donald Trump was talking about when he was a billionaire, Mark Cuban, Michael Green, Bloomberg, they all came out and said, oh, no, he a broke boy. Yep. We know the billionaires. He ain't in our club. He a broke boy. Nobody said a word. Everybody just went with it. And because nobody said a word, I ain't think nothing of it because I'm like, well, you know, he probably, you know, and I never felt sad for like the way his career went. I used to say, well, he got big in that money. He don't need, he don't even need to play. That's Amen. why he don't care. And I felt that he acted the way he did because he really didn't need the money. Come to find out, they just, I mean, they probably got money, but they ain't got all money. Right. And then you find That's out that he, he acted the way he did because the school that he went to was like a military style school and he was just being rebellious. That's essentially mm -hmm. is what happened. The stardom is what really kind of got him, what pushed him over the edge of the asshole that we knew. But it was very interesting in the part where he talked about, you know, once he got drafted by Cleveland, he just didn't want to play football anymore. He didn't love it anymore. You know, he just didn't want to do it. And that part was very interesting to me. What was yeah. also interesting to me is his estranged or ex-wife is one of Nick Cannon's baby mamas. Girl, what is going on? They have missed the opportunity for reality. I cannot wrap my brain around that Thank at you. all. 
I said, well, when did it happen? Did she go from Nick Cannon to Johnny Manziel? But apparently she was going to Johnny Manziel to Nick Cannon. I think that's how to that works. Yeah. Yes, because they're not together, to my understanding. But okay. that is insane. Like, who knew that those words That's a were like weird alive? connection. Yes. Another thing that I found interesting was, um, I mean, you... You could tell like the family had kind of the family had kind of been like, hey, we're done here. Like you're on you're you're out here drinking, you out here doing all this. But one thing I found interesting and one thing that reminded me was so funny. The thing I found interesting was his sister saying, Yeah, he ain't in it like today. Yeah, no. He 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 need to be doing right what he's doing now, sitting in Zen and Wusa and everything. <laughs> like the sister knows some stuff. She said, No, he don't need to be playing football or basketball, ping pong, nothing. She said he need to be somewhere sitting down somewhere. So that tells us that this he's been they are working through some things with, with Johnny Football. They have been yeah. working through some things for a while with him, and that he he has some 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 demons. When you are partying and like partying and drinking, yeah. But when you are that, you can't be that twenty year old football fret boy forever. And it seems like he was in that perpetual loop of that. That was almost like his identity. Yep. But then the funny thing is, girl, I completely forgot that he went to Vegas in a wig. Yes, he sure did. <laughs> I- <laughs> I sure- oh, yes, he did. <laughs> Uh, and, hey. and they <laughs> Girl, that was terrible. Yeah. Who are you fooling? The first thing somebody and everybody and the first thing, what did people say? Child, I seen Johnny Manziel in a wig because we know it's you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Johnny was must see TV, whether it was good, yeah, or ugly, whatever. <laughs> Um, back to what you mentioned about what he dealing with, because in the documentary they mentioned, you know, that he had not talked to his family for a while, um, mm-hmm. and so they just started getting back together. And the father was saying how happy he was to have his son back. And then the guy that he made all the money with, they still haven't talked to this day. I, I hope uh-huh. that they can find some some resolve there, because you know, going through something like that and and and, and being so successful. I just really feel like, you know, y'all got to find a way to to make things, uh, make some amends there. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that also may, it may come with his maturity because. Yes, I agree. He may be blaming that young man for what yep. happened where you guys were accomplices in this. Y'all did this together. Um, you but know, how can he blame him when he was the one that went out and got a real agent and left him hanging yeah. on the side? Yeah, that's so amazing. so that, that's the only thing. Because other than that, I was like, "Well, that's your." He made you a whole lot of money at one point. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, it reminds me of it um, that Michael Vick doc. Remember when his there was a friend of his that a childhood friend that he had cut off after a while. Yeah. Um and, and 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 for that documentary, if you've seen that, he probably should have. For that, yes. he certainly should have. But it's it's kind of like a you know, let me cut ties with this part of my life. And it could be for Johnny Manziel, this guy could be a reminder of all of the things in his life that, you know, this is why I am where I am. Like, even though he didn't want to play football, I'm sure he didn't feel like he would be like this kind of like a a has-been. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you've been a star most of your life. Absolutely. So I I just hope that they can... um patch up there there at least just talk that through even if they're not friends again y'all can come in and, and have some peace with it um all right so you know we do this thing where we got to throw somebody in the volcano uh it is time to throw somebody something whatever in the volcano and shells i will let you start who are you throwing into the volcano all right so i'm sorry to have to do this to a sister a girl. <laughs> so a TikTok came across where this young lady uh, says that she brought, she was very excited, saved up her little coins for the Beyonce concert. And she bought tickets for the August 11th show. She was going to surprise her daughter for her birthday. She didn't use all her little money, her little savings. She saved all the little coins. And lo and behold, her ticket she bought it for the August 11th show. She thought that her she bought it for the August the 14th show, and she missed the show. 
Oh my God. So Beyonce had three shows. And not one time did you just peek at your tickets because you were so excited to see Beyonce that you just couldn't believe that you had to check your tickets to confirm your date and you missed the show. I and see Beyonce. Explain that one to me. I see Beyonce in one month. I see her. Do you in know? Do you, what, one do month. you know what the date on your ticket says? Baby, <laughs> done check six times and check four more times since I seen her TikTok. Cause girl, if you the way my chest got tight as I'm looking at her hold oh up my her God. ticket, and think, my chest got so tight. Like it literally is my worst nightmare. Oh. It's up there with missing a flight. Like, but you miss, and it's nothing anybody can do for you. You yeah. can't call down to the to the uh to Mercedes Benz Dome and say, "Hey y'all, I missed this other one. Can I get no? It's just a done deal." But here's my thing. One of the reasons that you're going into the volcano, ma'am, for two reasons. One, because you you clearly are irresponsible. But she did say, "Life be life," and, and I we didn't been there. I'd have been yeah. circling the drain before. Okay. Yeah. So I know life be life, and but I feel like. Girl, you're looking forward to the, the Beyonce should pull you out the drain. You should be looking forward to that. So that's one. The second part is, why did you not take that to your grave? Thank you. I'm not telling. A I would have bought some tickets to the 14th show and I wouldn't have told a soul. Do you understand? Wouldn't have told me? A soul, baby. Wouldn't have told a soul. I would have just, I don't know what I would have had to do to get them tickets on the 14th, but I'm going to that show, baby. I'm going that's to the show. If if, I, it, listen, if I got to walk up to a scalper outside and say, hey, I need, listen, whatever seat you got, I am going to the 14th show and I'm not going to say a word about yep. it. You would never see it on any kind of social media. Girl, somebody will have to waterboard me with the ocean to get that out of me. Uh-uh. Absolutely. I wouldn't tell her. I wouldn't say a word. I wouldn't I say would a word. Not. Yeah, I'm so, sorry, miss. We got to throw you in the volcano. You got to go into the volcano, girl. Sorry. Mm -mm. Sorry. Uh, I'm throwing the Commanders fans in the volcano um, <laughs> this week. This week they had joint practices uh, with the Ravens, and I, I, I this is a such uh, this fan base is very exhausting. They're an exhausting fan base. I saw a tweet earlier um, going around today, and the guy said, "I don't understand why um, people have such an issue with the, um, the them." Going back to the name Redskins because it's racist, sir. And that's why that they're not going back to the, the the Redskins. It's racist. What do you fucking mean? They're not going back to that. And then on top of that, you know the propaganda that's being posted on you know Emmanuel Forbes. Oh, he shut down Odell Beckham Jr. But they're not showing uh, Zay Flowers having a field day with him. And then. You know, people just saying that they are happy. They, they were happy about Marlon getting uh, hurt with a foot injury. And then they can't wait to, you know, uh, snap the preseason streak and that they own us. This, I, first of all, this is just preseason, baby. I, I don't understand. Oh, one guy even came out and said um, that he felt like he said he toured m &T, He was not impressed and that FedEx was a better. Oh, I saw that. that. And that's a big and, fat damn lie. And let me tell you something. I understand jealousy is what it is. I would be jealous, too, <laughs> if the team up the street for me was more successful. Than How about I, that? The, because the last time, if your rings, if your Super Bowl rings was a person, they would be married, a married family with three and a dog driving a minivan around. OK, that's how old those Super Bowl rings are. So I understand that you feel some type of way that the team up the street is um, their Super Bowl ring is only in the fifth grade. If that was a person. But ultimately, you what you're not going to do is lie about how that much better mm -hmm. FedEx mm -hmm. shitty feel. And I mean, shitty. I mean that in the most literal way possible uh, is the M&T Bank Stadium. First and foremost, it's only one way to get in and one way to get out. Secondly, you got beams that covers up certain seats. And lastly, y'all be sitting in Dookie. So what we're not going to do is act like FedEx is better than any other stadium. And I don't get shit. I've even had people say Qualcomm Stadium with the Chargers used to play in in San Diego was better than FedEx. So that's telling you how bad FedEx is and how nasty it is. So and the I am service tired of is bad in there. The, er, the the internet service is bad in there. And y'all know that on Sunday that that when NFL fans are out and about, we need our cell phones. We need to know what's going on. We got fantasy football. We got pick 'em. We got the bets going. Um, other games are playing, and you can't get nothing if you in if you're in FedEx. Um, you go to other stadiums and you get free Wi-Fi and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. 
So it's a terrible stadium. The fact the, the reasonable fans know it's a terrible stadium. They need to demolish the whole joint and build another one. But you have got a lot of nerve. Like if you have never been to that whole Orioles MT Bank, like that whole area, that whole area is so dope. It's bars on the outside. The food is good. So like I don't know what that person is. That that person has not had real world lived experiences, and we can. The, uh, we the, there's a there's a fake. Uh, there's a fake rivalry going on here, you know, between the Beltway 695 and 495. And look, so fun banter is cool, but when you start wishing bad injuries on somebody, yeah, don't do that. You know, when you start lying about shitty stadiums being better than other stadiums, you know, mm-hmm. when when you yeah, start um, asking why racist names, uh, we don't like racist names anymore. I mean, just just go to the damn volcano, okay? I am tired. Please the whole, get in the all volcano. Over. I've had enough of y'all, um, and I, I really can't wait till this game is over. And, I, again, why I would love this win streak to be over now because y'all have been so silly and petty. I don't. I definitely hope y'all get blown out in the preseason game. So we'll see how that goes. But, anyway, <laughs> I, I, I want them to be thrown in the volcano. Before we leave, though, we have to – a couple things. We want to send our condolences to the family of Alex Collins, um, he died in a motorcycle accident on Sunday. Um, I saw people. One thing that I really hate now, Chels, is that when someone passes away unexpectedly, people start doing these conspiracy theories. So I, I saw this vaccine thing. I want y'all to start ignoring these people. OK, that's yes. going to happen every time somebody dies unexpectedly. People are going to say vaccine. Ignore these people. These are people that are vaccinated themselves. So just don't don't engage. OK, please just uh, allow his family to to heal. Send your condolences and move forward. So Chels and I would love to extend our condolences to the family of Alex Collins, uh, former NFL running back. Secondly, we got a party going on. <laughs> you want to tell them about the party, Chels? Yes. So kickoff party is back. We are going yeah. back to Baltimore. Um, and uh, it's we can give out all of the details now. If you follow us on social media, you've seen the flyer, you've seen the Eventbrite. Um, we will be at Mansion Baltimore. Um, uh, where, what are we doing? Oh, doors open at six. We got happy hour specials we got food and food and drink specials we have dj cleaner who is coming in um to to entertain us before the game game is starting at 8 20. you know people always say what time does the game start hey man y'all y'all come on here 8 20 ish but you know how sometimes it will start a little later so we want to give y'all a lot of entertainment and things like that before the game um starts um oh more importantly most importantly throw back football gear, whether it's your jerseys, t-shirts, hats, try to find some throwback gear for your team. We want to see those. Uh, Cowboys fans, I know our shit is ugly, but put just, just entertain me, okay? Um, and so, yeah, did I leave Did I leave out anything besides the fact that we're like super excited about this? <laughs> no, I mean, again, if you, um, you can get the link at Gridiron Gals, at the NFL Chick, at Chels is Right, um, yep. on Twitter, at Gridiron Gals, at the NFL Chick on Instagram. Uh, if you have a problem finding a link, please don't uh, hesitate to at any of us on those channels and we can send you the link um, mm-hmm. to sign up. It is a free event. Uh, we just would love to have you there. So we are excited to have you. We are excited for the kickoff party to be back. And yes. um, I- I'm looking forward to a really, really good time and a fun NFL season. So before yeah. we go, do you have any final thoughts? Oh, so final thoughts. Um, DeMar Hamlin came back on the field last week. Mm. And I was very, very happy to see that. Um, you and I were together during that game. We were in Chicago um, and we couldn't watch football anymore. Like we, we, I mean, I know the game didn't come up, but we, we were like, yeah, I don't, we, 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 it shut down. I was worried. I was checking my phone all the time. I was scared to death. Um, thinking about all the things that I know from my work, like what could possibly be happening. And it just felt really good to see him healthy, cleared out on the field, playing well. Um, and it just feels good to see him, you know, kind of coming back and everything. Um, but I want just listen. We talked about people that need to be ignored. Okay, 
folks are saying that it's a clone on the field. Okay. I want, listen, the problem with Twitter is that, and someone said this and it was very eloquent. Twitter, the problem with Twitter is that all of the reading groups are now combined. <laughs> we used to be separated, you know, and now everybody is sitting at the same lunch table. Okay. And so you got extreme dummies that not only did they think that it was the vaccine at first, and then they thought he was really dead and everybody in the NFL was pertaining. But now that they see him doing interviews and talking and he's out on the field, now he, now we have cloned an entire NFL player and stuck him on the field to what end? I don't know. But please ignore those people. That man is back. It is not some invasion of the body snatchers. I know that we, you know, they say the aliens is out here. He is not one of them. Just get, those are people that you have to block. So my final I'm thoughts, I'm glad you're, you're, you're back, uh, Damar Hamlin, um, sending out the heart and everything to you. Um, and I hope you have a good, healthy season. Yes, absolutely. I, I definitely agree. Um, I really pray that you have a healthy season, um, a prosperous season, unless you somehow play the Ravens in the playoffs, then I don't oh, want you God. to prosper. Um, but I want you to be healthy. <laughs> I do. I want you to I want you to be healthy. I just don't want you to win at the Ravens. Not uh, the asterisks on the well wishes. <laughs> Well, I mean, I want him to be, I, well, the healthy part I, I, is consistent. I definitely want that man to have a healthy and a great season yeah. and a healthy life. I want him to have a healthy life. But if he plays the Ravens, I want him to not do well. That and that's right. you want him. He just miss a few tackles, um, yeah, you know, go miss, around yeah. or something like that. Get caught Absolutely. peeking and you know, get blown past something like that. Absolutely. Uh, for me, my final thought is this time. Uh, by the time we do our next podcast. Um, the untold uh, Florida Gator story will be out. I'm excited about it. Um, I am curious to see how this is going to be portrayed. This is the story. And I, I'm interested because this is a story that I just felt like was never going to be told because there's a lot of drama um, mm -hmm. within the Florida Gators. So I'm interested to see how this is going to be told, who's going to be telling the story, how much they uh, sugarcoat it, or if they're going to be honest and tell the real truth about it. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, to see how this goes, because I really like the untold with Johnny Manziel. So I'm looking forward to how they do the story with uh, the Gators. So uh, we can okay. talk about that on our next podcast yeah, next yeah. week. I I'm excited to have that conversation. So. Can I say one one thing that you forgot? What? Girl, by the night, the time we come back again, the Bishop Sycamore documentary is coming out. Oh, oh, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Oh, Listen that's gonna be, we got a lot of homework to do. We. Listen, and y'all do too, because we're going to spoil it on the podcast. So, <laughs> so if you listen, if you, hey, we're going to spoil it on the podcast because, baby, we're talking about Bishop Sycamore because I still can't wrap my brain. You talking about a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I still cannot wrap my brain around that but one. The funny thing is, right? This continues the narrative of how, like, media has not fact checked anything. From the Manziel oil money to Bishop, Bishop Sycamore, like how did these things happen and went unchecked? Y'all you know, not embarrassed? Y'all not embarrassed? I mean, at oh this point, God. how many more things gotta happen before y'all be like, you know what we I'm should do? Telling you, we should fact check something. They can hire us because we are gonna get down to it, baby. Because we 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 get on Instagram and find out who them broke up. Who messing with who? <laughs> Girl, we can find out if Bishop Sycamore has got their accreditation or not. That's easy work. <laughs> oh, my God. I just, I, I don't understand it. So I am looking forward to both of those. And we're definitely going to be talking about them uh, next week or within the next couple of weeks. I'm excited uh, to see yeah. how those documentaries go. So, so y'all better watch. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You better because we're gonna tell it. We're we gonna tell it. Uh, we want to thank you all for listening. Uh, we really enjoy this. Hopefully, you like the videos, the visuals. Next time, I'm gonna have something a little bit better done with my head and not look like I'm a baldy, <laughs> even though I got hair. See, I, I ain't bald, y'all. It's hair right there. It's just it's a little light skin. That's all. Girl, we know you got hair. Okay. I just There's wanted to make it. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to the videos that we'll be doing um, this season. We can have some fun with it, right? We can dress yeah. up and, and, and do some props and some other stuff. So I'm looking forward to more videos with my girl, Chels. Thank you guys for joining us in the Gridiron Gals podcast. Later.